Ben from uh, Geelong Market Branch. I've been asked to do a quick uh, workplace uh, podcast for you. Basically talking about exact. An exact is, from, uh, is a reduction of oxygen after cardiac arrest. And uh, the reasons why we're doing it is to normalise oxygen delivery post uh, ROS patients. And this is to avoid hyperoxic states, um, thus reducing free rad radicals. Uh, re reducing apoptosis and this salvaging as much cerebral uh, tissue as we possibly can and this will hopefully improve survival to discharge. Exact, it's a three phase uh, random controlled trial hoping to enrol 1,416 patients. It's a multi-centre trial so it's not just Geelong, it's throughout Australia. Uh, the most important thing is that we have to know the inclusion criteria for our patients. They all have to be adult patients over the age of 18. Out of hospital cardiac arrest, obviously that's how we're involved, and a, presumably of a cardiac cause. And that's all rhythms. It can be asystole, PA, but predominantly VFVT. GCS uh, for us will be less than nine, so it's someone we should be thinking about intubating via RSI or if not intubated pre-arrest. Uh, any ROS patients, uh, SATs greater than 95% with oxygen at 10 litres a minute or FiO2 100% uh, or one with our ventilator, and this can be at any stage for our treatment. So it can be from uh, obviously post-ROSC or post-intubation or any stage through transport where the SATs go above 95%, we can enroll them into the trial. Uh, presumably the patients will be intubated or have a cervicalic airway if it's a failed intubation or transport, and we're gonna be transporting to participating hospitals. So within this region, that will be Geelong Hospital. Uh, exclusions are if anyone's pregnant, uh, that depend on anybody else, such as nursing home patients or uh, requiring high care at home, anyone with advanced care directives or NFR, and anyone who's likely to require oxygen uh, therapies outside of this, which will be anyone like COPD, um, and any cardiac arrest due to drowning, trauma, or hanging. So, what is it? It's basically, uh, that obviously, have to be include, uh, meet our criteria to be included. But uh, we get given an envelope, which is an opaque envelope, which we rip open, and it'll give us two two arms which we can go through. Two arms, the first arm is pretty much what we're doing now, that's where we keep giving uh, uh, sets maintained between 98 to 100%, and we're either using a ventilator of, of one, or a bag valve mask of oxygen flow rates greater than 10 litres a minute. Uh, if the patient's on the intubators, say we don't get the tube in or anything like that through RSI or during the arrest, and the patient's uh, GCS is increasing and uh, they're able to remove their superglottic airway. We just put the oxygen on by 10 litres a minute through a non rebreather mask. The other arm, which is the, I guess, the arm that's being studied the most of them for this study, is uh, where we're trying to titrate the SATs to 90 to 94%. Um, presumably, most of our patients will be uh, ventilated uh, given they've got ROSC and got a GCS less than 9. So that will be uh, on our ventilator using the uh, oxygen or of room air or non-room air, which is the uh, button on the right-hand side. We'll go to the uh, the room air mix. So um, if we're not using uh, the ventilator, we're going O2 by bag valve mask at four litres a minute. That's equivalent to a FiO2 of 0.7. And if these sets remain greater than 94% after five minutes of that treatment, we'll reduce that to two litres a minute, which is equivalent to a FiO2 of 0.46. Um, if the SATs at any stage drop below 90% or the patient re-arrests, we're obviously going back to how we treat them. That's uh, with uh, high flow oxygen or FiO2 of 100%. And if we happen to lose a tube or uh, unable to gain the tube with RSI, we'll be going out nasal pumps at 2 to 4 litres. I uh, just to main, once again maintain those SATs at 90 to 94%. Uh, post intubation, uh, there's a tag within the uh, envelope. We'll be putting that over the ETT or superglottic airway and making sure that's highly visible to the ED staff. Um, and this has to be handed over to the ED staff that they're in the trial. That only makes sense. Uh, now the trial it basically starts from the time that we enrol the patient and then to uh, the time they go up to ICU when they do the first blood gas and that's when the trial ends and then they'll be followed up by study people to see how they progress to our hospital, uh, hospital survivability. The proposed thing is that at the moment we're getting 35% of people walking out of hospital. The proposed things with these changes, I think there'll be an improvement with that with animal studies and uh, just prospective uh, analysis. But I think they'll be increasing the 45% survival. So there's good reasons that not only are we improving our practice, but improving the patient. So let's get on board and 
include that and get involved with the studies. So, yeah, cheers.